Streaming live across the globe, Anjali Rao, Rob McKnight, and David Robinson. Welcome to the Ange, Rob and Robbo Show. Hello there for this wonderful Monday as we start the week with none other than Larry Mduro. I still can't say his oh my name. God. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, no, it's all right. So he hasn't been years. around for a while. You know, he's brand new. We don't know how to say his name yet, but hopefully soon we will. <laughs> There's going to be so much pressure on me when I introduce him tonight, Larry Mduro. Mm. He will be joining us tonight. We are very Larry excited. Emder. I am a big fan, Robbo. Are you a big fan of his? I love Larry M. I think he's absolutely fantastic. He's one of those. That he honestly, he's kind of that all-round star mm. that that should deserve to get you know gold logies because he can do everything. Like it, it kind of harks back to that that old time where proper personalities used to win. I'm not saying that you know Grant Daniel is absolutely the same kind of thing. He's a popular personality and and, and very good and very versatile. Um, but uh, yeah, sorry, I gave you a really serious in-depth answer and we're just in the intro so i should have just said yeah i love him he's great we'll edit that out later do you think he'll mind me getting his name wrong i've known him for a few years and of course Ange, thanks amanda um of course the reason he's here tonight is because he was named over the weekend as the new host of the chase australia Ange, something we revealed to the viewers of the and robin rob show Robo show uh, oh weeks ago. You, can you, can't, you right? can't even get my name right. You say it five days a week, four days a week, and you still can't get it right. Jeepers. Creepers. I don't know what's going on. And I haven't had how do you say? Name. How do you say Angie's name? Say, na- say Angie's Angela full Rao. name. Oh, perfect. It's like you've come straight out of Bangalore. <laughs> <laughs> hey, before we move on and get to Larry and all the things we're talking about today, did you know today is World Thinking Day? It's celebrated each year by the Girl Guides and Girl Scouts across the world on the 22nd of February. Thinking Day, and I don't think I've ever been on board with Thinking Day, but it originated from a desire by the Girl Guides and Girl Scouts to dedicate a day to thinking about and appreciating the global spread of these movements. The observance of Thinking Day has been celebrated every year since 1926. I'd love to think one day, Robbo. (laughs) Yeah, no, I I would too. I'm just thinking back to when I used to present this at the start of the show uh, and I was told it takes up too much time and now all of a sudden... (laughs) I've noticed over the past couple of days it's returned. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, okay. But that's, that's, sorry, that's, you, you said me. thinking, I'm thinking. <laughs> You've got 364 yeah, so I... <laughs> other days not to think. 364. Yeah. You only have one where you have to think. Very good point. Hey, look, there is a lot coming up in the show. As we said, Larry will be joining us. There's a lot happening in the world of entertainment. We will have inside information on Married at First Sight because our oh. entertainment reporter, Jason Roses, was in tonight's episode of Married at First Sight. He was Ooh. the MC of the weddings. Is He's he getting married? What went down. <laughs> Is he married? He was the MC. But look. Well, no, can you just build up the promo, please? We believe Jason Roses got married tonight on oh, Max. Yes, we'll have more details. So he about did. It in this he said he did. In this Andrew yeah. Robin Robbo exclusive, <laughs> I almost said dead Robin Robbo. I'm going to be completely honest there. Oh, no. Two, we're, we're five, three minutes in. Jeez, we need to get on with the show. There's too much to get into. So let's move on to our hot button issues of the day. <laughs> Bravery, courage, blame, cover up. These are just some of the words being used to describe the alleged rape of Brittany Higgins at Parliament House. But now textbook response can be added to that list. Well, that's according to an opinion piece by former minister Amanda Vanstone in the Sydney Morning Herald. She believes the Minister for Defence, Linda Reynolds, shouldn't be criticised for her handling of the situation. And Amanda Vanstone speaks of hindsight and armchair experts. Do you think she should be given a break or is that unfair to Brittany Higgins? Brittany Higgins, but, you know, it's just, you know, liberal supporting liberal it's just all getting very political now and you know, didn't you just know that that people would just come out defending Reynolds after the footage of her crying in Parliament came out and and also since when is textbook response to an alleged rape something to be proud of 
Now, I stand by my opinion when we talked about this last week and, you know, the minister saving her tears, potentially, I'm going to say yes, um, for when it became public that she'd known about the allegations but did practically nothing is pretty grotesque and, to my mind, makes her complicit in the, you know, that parliamentary culture of denigrating women and covering up when something bad happens to women there. And look, Amanda Vanstone, um, as much as I like her as a person, her argument is just beyond simplistic. Like, oh, well, she went to police, but then she changed her mind. Brittany Higgins mm. was terrified. She was terrified over losing mm. her job yes. that if she reported it to police, you know, that that, that that would happen. And plus it can take a very long time once you report something like this, often years also, to realise that happened to you was rape. Even being able to get your head around that and constitute that word and attaching it to what you may have been through that's a huge thing in itself knowing that once you do report it you've got to relive it over and over and over again with your credibility being raked over the coals and have it torn to pieces there may also have been a considerable amount of, of self-blame that she was in that situation as your reputation could to consider so to imply amanda vanstone that Brittany higgins simply changed her mind is just about as ignorant as our Prime Minister only being able to understand what appears to have happened by remembering that he's got two daughters. I put those things in the same basket. And yep. everything that yep, you're yep, saying yep. there is correct. What I took from this was we had a young lady who decided not to go forward with um, uh, going to the police and, and changed her mind regarding that. And Linda Reynolds has said it wasn't her story to tell. Now, that contradicts a bit because she did tell um, Cash, you know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, about it. So she did break that trust. Um, I'm getting very, very confused on this issue. You know, I've heard commentary where people are saying, well, this isn't just a liberal issue. This is on all sides. Nobody's caring about the political parties. Sure. Only you guys are caring in Canberra about the political parties at the moment. What everyone's yeah. caring about is what these women have been through. We're now up to four allegations yep. against this guy who so far has not been named in the press uh, and, we will say, presumed innocent until found mm -hmm. guilty. Um, but, Robbo, I think what Amanda Vanstone is saying is that if you go down the list of what you're supposed to do, Linda Reynolds did that. Tick the boxes. Wow. Yes. She certainly ticked boxes, I think, by offering for uh, Brittany to then be moved to her home state of WA to still work in the system. Um, but those kind of things also get a bit icky for me as well, because, well, you know, I, I would think, and I, this is my opinion, and that is, I think that those things were put in place so that um, there wasn't a big brouhaha about what had happened. Look, you know, I've, no, I've listened to you. I've suggested you go to the police. Uh, I think deep down in the government, um, in, in, in everyone's mind, uh, there's this idea of going, okay, thank God she didn't want to go to the police. Um, but let's take care of her internally in, in regards to uh, she can go to WA or she can do that, which to me is kind of disrespectful to someone who has been brave enough to report that kind of that kind of thing. Yes, she was giving the option to police, but we don't know what the tone was in the office. We don't know. And mm. look, I wouldn't be surprised if it was. Do you really want to go to the police? Like that's really tough. Do you really, look? Why don't we just? Why don't we ship you off to WA? Hey, you can still work for me. No one, you know, you don't lose a job. That starts to get a little bit icky for me. I think, um, uh, and especially when because uh, last week there was a voicemail that was uh, released to the press and that was Michaelia Cash being very um, vague, but also just checking you're okay, how are you going, um, blah, blah, blah. You know, that, that that clearly shows to me that there has been talks behind the scenes of going, uh, well, we need to check up on this. We need to, uh, you know, probably try but not admit it that we're going to bury this a little bit. Um, cover up, I'm not sure now that I'm hearing more details, but it certainly seems like uh, preservation. And Look, not for it, Brittany Higgins, it, but for everyone else. It would be else. ridiculous to think that when parliamentarians heard about this issue, the one of their first thoughts, if not their first, would have been, if this gets out, it's a scandal we don't need. No Absolutely. politician wants to be surrounded by scandal. Half their lives are about burying scandal, protecting themselves, mm. 
and try mm-hmm. and dig up dirt on the opposition. So to think that there weren't discussions about this and the impact it would have for the Liberal Party and the government is complete BS. It happened. Yeah. And and I'm not even passing judgment on that because that is the reality of politics or any business that was would be in that situation. Any high profile business would consider the fallout of what happens if this and, goes and, public. And, mm. And Rob, sorry to cut you off really quickly, but I, I absolutely 100% agree with you. It also makes it worse because in, in the greater electorate, the greater community, the, the whole of the country, there is a perceived and understood and accepted uh, notion that the Liberal Party, the Liberal National Party, have a problem with women. So that, I think, also feeds into exactly what you're saying absolutely. because they're always you know, uh, being criticised for not having enough women in Cabinet or having enough women in government or... Um, you know, giving pre-selection to to women. So I think that also goes very strongly into your point of it's a massive problem for them when, uh, you know, this kind of story comes out. Sorry to interrupt. No, all good. This is what we're we're a discussion program, Robbo. Angie, I'm going to give you the final (laughs) word on this. Um, What's the balance between protecting the party and trying to do the right thing by this young lady and now these young ladies i understand that the the balance is is a very delicate thing i suppose it always would be but you would hope um you know i was going to say as a woman but it shouldn't just be as a woman it should be that you know yes okay protecting the party is one thing but doesn't your you know your the the human being in you override that Mm. Um, and that's where I think they're just they're just a bit skewed. And I'm sure that look, it wasn't just one person who was going, oh no, let's sweep this under the rug. There would have been so many of them. And mm. you know, even if um, you know Linda Reynolds want to come out and say, look, look, I really think that we should, you know, go big with this. We've got to get this out in the open. That she would have had plenty of people around her going, oh no, 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 I don't think we'll be doing that. Um, so she she has taken the fall. I, I think I definitely do believe that. But I also go, ugh, textbook response, okay, let's have a bit of a cry in Parliament, and yeah. Exactly. I I agree with that entirely. Yep, 100%. All right, let's move on. There were spectacular scenes captured at last night's Australian Open finals presentation. Jane Herdlicker, the chair and board president of Tennis Australia, was booed when she spoke about COVID vaccinations being rolled out worldwide. Take a look. Both players and, frankly, all of the players over the course of the last three weeks have been playing under exceptional circumstances. In fact, the last 12 months have been exceptional circumstances for everybody around the world. It's been a time of heartfelt uh, challenge. It's been a time of deep loss and extraordinary sacrifice for everyone. And with vaccinations on the way, rolling out in many countries around the world, it's now a time for optimism and hope for the future. She ended the speech by commenting the audience was a very opinionated group of people. Ange, mm. what do you think about this? First of all, why were they booing about vaccines? Um, I, I love the opinionated bit because it's like um, also known as Australian. Um, (laughs) you know it was funny because I was watching it great match um and at the time I didn't actually get the notion that they were booing what she said about the vaccine it it sounded as if it was more like when she started talking about how great the government of Victoria was and um you know bigging up how tennis Australia couldn't have done it without them blah 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 um but then on on second listen to that wow Wow, that was that was just nasty. I mean, I get that. Okay, if you bring up something about vaccinations, um, you know, given the level of opposition to it, which is extremely unfortunate, she probably did have to expect some sort of, if you will, backhander. Um, But I don't know whether, um, you know, turning what was the culmination of a a really great game into a public service health announcement was really needed. You know, she's, she's not Brett Sutton. Um, but but booing in any case is stupid and disrespectful and puerile, and that, that is what would have made us look bad on the world stage. Oh. That reaction was inexcusable. 
I couldn't agree more. I do not understand this need to boo our political leaders when we're on the world stage. It happened at the, I think it happened at the Olympics with Howard as well, where he came up and got booed. And it just makes us look so bad. I hate it. Mm -hmm. You know, like whatever your political persuasion, think of country first and stop making us look like immature little brats. Robbo, do you yeah. like a boo at the at the at the sport? At the sport. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't think I. My brain was on that. As, well, yes, the sport. I love the sport. Um, no, no, this is awful. Um, I also hate it when I went to a. Uh, is it football? I don't, I don't know. They had a ball. Uh, I went to a football match once, and people were booed when the other team came out. I'm like, oh, get over yourselves. But you've got to remember. People are idiots. Uh, and I think that especially people like that, I would have loved, um, I don't know how this would happen, but I would have loved for those people who booed, hey, if you booed, come and talk to us, you know, uh, 7, 9, 10, camera or whatever, ABC, and say, you know, why'd you boo? What's your thoughts? Mm. Uh, you, you know what I bet? Mm -hmm. I bet that line would be pretty bloody small when uh, you're not hiding behind, uh, you know, a crowd. Also, I think that, um, I think that, uh, the chair had to say something about the vaccination, had to acknowledge COVID because it did create such a stir. We, I mean, we spoke about it at length on this program over over many shows about whether the Australian Open should go ahead, uh, you know, and things like that. So I think, you know, she had to do it. Also, I think the comments were incredibly benign. Just they, 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 they <laughs> were a classic comment of just saying, hey, you know, uh, it'll be fantastic uh, COVID's been a big part of it, uh, but, you know, we're moving forward, vaccines rolling out of the country. It wasn't political. Uh, it wasn't pushing an agenda. To me, it was just absolutely required to be acknowledged, and it was acknowledged in a very brief way. And then She did go on idiots. to thank the Victorian government, and that got a much bigger boo. And yeah. Which, you know, like, I don't like the booing, but I can actually understand that because people have very strong feelings about the yes. lockdowns and everything like that. But the idea of getting sure. vaccinations gets a boo. I think we've lost our way if this is what we're doing now. Like, really. And what she the said whole, was, was absolutely logical. Us. Yeah. You know, what she said was, you're right, Robbo, absolutely benign and just like plain logic. But logic doesn't yeah. mean anything to people who boo. Yeah. That's Fair so enough. true. That's such a, yeah, very, very good. Very good point. Yep. Mm. All Thanks, right. Robbie. The X Files, a show about conspiracies oh. and deception, taught us that we should trust no one. And it appears some people are applying that to their friends. Stefano Hatfield from the I newspaper in Britain has asked the question should he engage in futile arguments or simply let them go? He's referring to the discovery since lockdown, he's communicating with people via Facebook when you could still do that. Not so sure anymore. But he's talking about the fact he would have drinks with people at the pub and they'd have little arguments and he'd have debates. But having seen their opinions on social media, on social media, he's seen some fairly extreme conspiracy theories, including doubt that COVID is real, anti Bill Gates, and arguing the US election was indeed stolen. So, Robert, what do you do here? Do you stop and go, ah, oh, that's just Terry, Terry Tosser? He believes in these <laughs> things. Um, thank you, Ange. Um, he believes in these things. I'm not going to engage. Or do you do what you do with me every night and take the fight up? <laughs> I'll tell you. I was going to be very honest here. Um, you know, our, our dear friend and wonderful producer, Abby, will know all too well that I don't necessarily let it go. I kind of go for the fight, um, which I'm trying to get better at that, you know, um, after 28 years of being on this planet, I'm still learning, you know, and I'm still trying to work out what um, what is appropriate. And... Okay, fine. 29. I'm 29 <laughs> in November. Um, Mate, can I can I just uh, make a suggestion when it comes to age? Add 10 years, and then people go, "You look good." For 28, you're looking a bit haggard, mate. <laughs> Whoa! I, sorry, I. I meant to turn this camera down. I didn't mean to put it out at HD. I'm trying to do everything. <laughs> uh, so I'm kind of got the... Uh... Anyway. Um, I tell people I'm no, 58. Thought... Yeah, do you? Yeah, look. I, I tell them I'm 93. 58. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. You're I the only one that can get away with it. Um, <laughs> yes, so... Um, 
I, look, you know what? I, I, I appreciate where this guy was coming from. He was saying that he loves to get different debates. He loves to have the debate. He loves to hear from other people. That's fantastic. Uh, I don't think it's worth losing friends over. So if I had a friend um, who was anti-vax, um, look, I, that's, that's a small part of them, I think. Maybe this is too hard for me to actually do because I don't have any friends that are anti-vax because all my friends are intelligent. Uh, so I think that maybe possibly that's hard for me to comment on. But... I don't know that I would lose a friend if they had an extreme opinion on one thing, but if they were a lovely person, made me laugh, we had a good time, we could hang out. Um, I don't know that I would necessarily judge that as The key is if they can let it go, like, isn't it? That when you see them, you're not being, take the anti-vaxxer with, from Terry Tosser, that if he's telling you mm. that the whole time, Ange, then you just you would get to the point, surely, where you're like, I just want to have a beer, mate. Shut up. I know, God, you sound like Dan Andrews when you say that. Um, (laughs) (laughs) You know what? I actually do have a couple of Pete Evans worshipping, 5G hating mass dodgers in my friendship group who think that the moon doesn't exist and all redheads are part extraterrestrial. Are they real Um, housewives by any chance? (laughs) You'll never know until you tune in. (laughs) It's rough. It's rough, though. And particularly when you're a journalist on the other side listening to this, Then they really get at you like, how can you just blindly believe X, Y, and Z when you're a journalist? Like, it must be in my DNA to instead blindly believe whatever the fringe is spouting because the government and mainstream school of thought are 100% lying 100% of the time. Um, But the thing that gets me isn't actually their nutso opinions, which can be quite good for entertainment value. (laughs) It's that there is absolutely no reasoning with them. And that's a really difficult thing to get around because you can be as patient as you like, but you know, I'm very transparent when my eyes glaze over. So I basically, you don't have a choice. I sit there and I nod until they're all puffed out and their tinfoil berets start to overheat. (laughs) And then I get to go home. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's a good way to deal with it. (laughs) <laughs> or you just talk about Real Housewives. Change the subject. All right, as I'm about to do. Because it was the anthem that, according to nice. some, didn't hit the right note. Sydney singer Gordy took to the court for the final night of the Australian Open and sang Advance Australia Fair. It wasn't just her performance that was criticised, but also the lyrics she chose to sing. Instead of singing the recently updated One and Free, she sang the original, Young and Free. Have a listen. Australians, oh, let us rejoice, for we are young and free. With golden soil and wealth for toil. They forgot to turn the auto tune on. Uh, Look, however, there's a twist in this. Because people are now saying she should be given a break because she's actually worked as a front line, as a doctor fighting COVID. Now, Ange, does this change your opinion? Was that a crap performance or do we have to take her history into account when we're judging her performance? I don't know. I mean, you guys know that I'm a singer myself and I'm always loath to bag on others because we all have off days. But... Oh, my God. That wasn't oh off. God, oh that God. thing was dead for three months, sitting in the sewer with uh, a new load of feces washing over it. That's how bad that was. Seriously? It was terrible. Um, I know. Look, I admit that, <laughs> oh my that I, did, I did stay and listen to it for, like, five seconds, and then I realised that was the perfect time to take my bins out. Um, which <laughs> And so you took the trash out the... while the trash was being served up on national oh. television. <laughs> I, I definitely I've got noticed a million of them, my, baby. Bins, my bins were only half as rancid as that performance. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know. So once I found out that, you know, it was clear what she did for a living and how she's been so selfless in the pandemic, I did feel bad for thinking that was putrid. So on further thinking, I'm like, all right, so she's a doctor, but she's also a professional singer and that means that we shouldn't feel guilty for going that love was not good yeah. and you know she sounded nothing like a professional singer should she sounded like a professional doctor 
who was having a turn on SingStar. At karaoke, mm. not singing yeah. the national anthem in front of millions of people around the world. It's embarrassing and it's appalling. And I'm sorry, when someone comes out and performs, you don't get a whole booklet where you say, well, she's been this and this and this and this. The fact is your performance has to stand on its own. You are either good or you are bad. And I'm sorry, you were bad. Robbo? Mm. Yeah, I, look, I do believe that she's still uh, pressing on and is going to release that particular performance on her album, <laughs> Strangling a Cat, uh, which is fantastic. <laughs> I, I, I think that the rest of her oh, uh, the rest of her tracks will also be uh, up to that standard. Uh, look, also the other thing, a uh, bit of a problem with those lyrics, if I can just go back to that. It was a terrible performance. Um, and, I, I, like, I hate that kind of bloody new age, bloody bullshit way that people sing sometimes uh, but uh see i speak like a real 28 year old don't i i mean that a 28 year old would have i uh, shouldn't wink because then you can see the crows but uh yes i think that um she should have like sung the like that would have been at the forefront of my mind because the anthem is so um uh, you know it's been the news a lot we've had that change it's a weird weird thing i don't think I it would have saved the performance though yeah, it, it was it was an odd thing that it wasn't just naturally done because I'm sure she she appears to be woke. Um, mm. <laughs> right, but you know, she even admitted well, she might woke, be woke, Robbo, but face. she's gonna be broke yeah. if she's trying to get a career with that voice. <laughs> but I do yeah. think that she yeah, does well. deserve a shout out. She did shine in one part. That was in her reply to a troll who said, mm, "Yeah, definitely would be me, uh, more going down the doctor path," and she goes. Thanks. Hope to see you in the hospital. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so hang on, hang no, on. So is I she? Oh, let's get serious. Is she saying that she yep. wouldn't look after them? She would oh. turn her back on she a Hippocratic oath. Oh, this woman oh, just goes from bad to worse. You never know until you turn up. It's a Hippocratic hypocrite. Hippocratic. Hippocratic <laughs> are they the same words? The Hippocratic oath. Can't say. Yeah. Let's move yeah, on, Robbo. Because the Hollywood Foreign Press Association has been referred to as a 90s nobodies having a wank and a silly game. Oh, and they also decide the nominees and winners of the Golden Globes. 87 journalists make up the association and one journo from Norway wanted to make it 88, but she was rejected. So she tried to sue, pointing out the organisation was kind of a cartel and has a culture of corruption. The case was thrown out. However, the HFPA, the Hollywood Foreign Press Association, is no stranger to criticism and is pretty much thought of as joking Hollywood. Now, to me, Ange, this is interesting. Ricky Gervais himself, the host we can see there, has actually openly mocked the Hollywood Foreign Press Association on stage. There is basically criticism that the Hollywood studios don't like it, but they like the promotional value that Golden Globes give them. The people that work in the Hollywood Foreign Press Association are not big name journos from around the world. You know, um, let's put it this way. If you were looking at Australia, to me, Angela Bishop, Yep. And Richard Wilkins would be yep. the people totally that would be part of the Hollywood Foreign Press Association. They are not. Mm -hmm. This is a closed group. You cannot get in. And um, it, it, it just reeks of freebies and five-star hotels. And it is a joke, but I love the Golden Globes. So do I. I think they're absolutely fantastic. Yes, it's a joke and that's the great thing. But the thing is that, you know, Hollywood made the HFPA and, and what they giveth, they can taketh away if they wanteth. <laughs> However, the studios <laughs> do not want to kill the Golden Globes, which they could do with a single ahoy hoy, because <laughs> it brings in the dark. <laughs> it brings in the <laughs> It gets the most fantastic attention. They didn't have any interest whatsoever in killing it or even changing it. And, you know, I've spent long enough as an entertainment correspondent knowing that the only thing we care about is it's not the art, sweetie pies. It is the sparkly frills that we yes. get. And it's easy to go, sure, you gave me a magnum of crystal. I'll vote for you in this thing that isn't the Oscars. But the only problem with the Golden Globes is that they want to be taken seriously, darling. Just leave that to the Oscars, for God's sake. <laughs> yes, enjoy the but freebies. They, but, they are a joke, aren't they, Robbo? 
Well, th but the problem is, though, if we're going to do a Rutensch examination, uh, that is that they are very much a kind of um, a, a pre a prequel, rather, in lack of another word, to the Oscars. That's mm -hmm. so they do have mm -hmm. some kind of credibility, which is weird uh, because of you know the fact that it's made up of eighty seven journalists that this sm relatively small group of people uh, decide the nominees and whatnot. Uh, Ricky Gervais also said that that you know he just it's some confused journalist who wants to get a selfie with a movie star. That's why they vote for them or, or, or that kind of thing. But you've got to look at it, though. If you're saying that the Oscars are prestigious and, and, and are better and at the pinnacle of, of awards, well, why do they follow so very, very closely? You can go back years and years and years, decades. Uh, if you win a Golden Globe, you are most likely to go on to win the Oscar. The Academy is made up of thousands of voters, uh, so not just an 88 team, but thousands and thousands. Uh, so you've got to start questioning that. So if you question the the legitimacy of the Golden Globes, then surely you have to start looking at the legitimacy of the Oscars because they are the one and same. That's I think that's important. Or to maybe the Hollywood foreign remember. press with fewer people just happen to get it right. Maybe. Well, but but then you're but then if they're getting it right, then you're suggesting that they are legitimate and they are doing the right thing, and it isn't a joke. You've turned me, Robbo. You've been trying for many years. This you finally yeah. succeeded. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. That sentence was a trigger for me, so I didn't know how to react to it initially. <laughs> apart from just go like that, and get very excited. Um, <laughs> I know, I felt like I should, um, I'll just get my coat. <laughs> no, please don't. Hey, look, there is plenty still ahead on this edition of the Ange Robin Robbo Show. We will be catching up with the one and only Larry Amger from Channel 7. He's just been made the host of The Chase and he's had a fabulous career. Uh, he's had some highs, he's had some lows, and we'll ask him all about those. And uh, we'll be getting entertained with Jason Roses. Plenty ahead for you. But first, let's get some news with Ange. Absolutely, getting you right across some of the other main stories this Monday, February the 22nd, 2021. Well, the year goes from bad to worse for ex-NRL star Sam Burgess after being pulled over for traffic offences, reportedly with cocaine in his system. Police charged the former South Sydney captain with driving unregistered, alleging Burgess never held a New South Wales licence. They say he also returned a roadside drug test, which was positive for cocaine. Earlier this month, Burgess was found guilty of intimidating his ex-father-in-law. All this amidst a nasty divorce from his former wife, Phoebe. The Victorian government is refusing to commit to cancelling Crown's gaming licence if recommended to do so by the Royal Commission investigating the casino operator. Gaming Minister Melissa Horne also defended Crown's suitability to continue to operate pending the Royal Commission, which could cost up to $7 million. This follows the Bergen inquiry earlier this month, which found Crown had facilitated money laundering and that it was not fit to hold a licence in New South Wales. Mob rule prevailed in a North Melbourne suburb, with a police car being forced out of a residential street after a rowdy wedding party blocked the road and threatened two officers. Authorities initially responded to reports of erratic driving in the area, and things rapidly escalated once they identified the offending vehicles. Besuited members of the crowd launched on cops, berating them, and shall we say displaying liberal use of the middle finger. Police have now launched a manhunt to track down the men captured in the alarming footage. The rollout of the Pfizer vaccine is well and truly underway, with health experts saying it marks the final phase of the pandemic. The first recipients were those with the highest infection risk, as well as quarantine workers, frontline health staff and port and airport staff. Federal Health Minister Greg Hunt hailed it as an extraordinary moment for our country, but cautioned that COVID-safe practices like social distancing and hygiene measures will be with us for a long time. And everyone knows you don't touch a Nana's handbag without permission. Everyone that is, except this thief who clearly didn't get the memo. The elderly lady was celebrating her birthday at a Gold Coast pub, but when the man allegedly swiped her handbag and then he ran off, the barefoot granny gave hot pursuit, nabbing him and tackling him to the ground before placing him in a headlock. A 42 year old man will face court this week over the incident, while the Nan, who suffers from emphysema, says she doesn't know what she was thinking and all that without orthopedics. I'm pretty sure the thief is like, I don't think I know what I was thinking either. And also go girl. And now to the weather for tomorrow. It'll be a mostly sunny day in Cairns, but Brisbane will have a shower or two, possibly a storm. Sydney will also have a shower or two and there'll be a possible morning shower in Canberra. 
Melbourne, Hobart and Adelaide are heading for a partly cloudy day, but Perth will be very hot and sunny. Over in Alice Springs, you can expect a sunny day as well. And no surprises here, a possible storm in Darwin. Now, it feels like it's been ages since we laid eyes on the pulchritude of Jason Roses. <laughs> Let's find out what's going on in showbiz, my love. Hello. Um, yes, thanks, Ange. Um, hey, hey, it's Saturday. Is it coming back? Daryl Summers hints at a possible return, but is it what fans think it is? Gina Carano from The Mandalorian speaks out on her firing from Disney, and you won't believe what she has to say about the House of Mouse. And speaking of Disney, a big price hike is coming to the Disney Plus streaming services as hundreds of films and shows get added but I have important information on you, how you can save a bundle. And I'm gonna show you one of the weirdest commercials you'll ever see, and it features a Doctor Who Dalek. The entertainment report is coming up right after our interview with Larry Edmar, right here on the Ange, Rob and Robbo show. Now here's to Robbo. Well, Jason Roses, thank you. Can't wait to see your Dalek. I'm very excited about that. So thanks for, uh, thanks for uh, showing us that. Can't wait for that. I'm excited for it. But for now, let's find out what happened on this day, 22nd of February throughout history. Let's have a look right now. And it was on this day in 1935 that The Little Colonel was released. It starred Shirley Temple, Lionel Barrymore and Bill Robinson. It was the first film to feature an interracial dance couple. There's Colonel Sanders there in the left of your screen. All right, moving on. It was on this day in 2009 that a much-loved Australian was awarded an Oscar. And the Oscar goes to Heath Ledger in the Dark Knight. Heath Ledger was posthumously awarded the Oscar for his role as the Joker in The Dark Knight. His award was collected by his family. We can see that there. And finally, it was on this day in 1989, the New York Lottery awarded a single winner $26.9 million. I think that woman put her finger in a power socket. I think I don't know. That's a very high hair. <laughs> uh, the winning numbers, if you want to know, are 1, 5, 12, 19, 44, and 50, and there are no supplementaries. But for now, let's go from one big lottery to another big lottery. It is Robert McKnight with Larry. You're a winner. Thank you, Robbo. Well, he is Australian TV's game show king. And just this weekend, he was announced as the new host of the Chase Australia. He is, of course, the one and only Larry Emder, and he joins us now. Larry, welcome to the Ange Robin Robbo Show. Hello, team. How are you? <laughs> Mate, not as good as you must be feeling. You have just been named the host of the Chase. This is a very big deal. How are you feeling about the appointment? Rob, I, I, I feel... Uh, I I feel very, very excited, like incredibly excited, but nervous at the same time. It, it's been a while uh, since I've had to do this and the jazz hands and the, the bouncing around the big set. But I'm, um, you know, it's, it's in my blood. You know me. This is something that I feel very, very passionate about this space. And I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled to have the opportunity. This is one of the, the greatest TV quiz shows in the world. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm super excited. Did you have any doubts about accepting the role? There's a lot of pressure on this role. It's the big audience grabber that comes in before the news. It's the big lead in. There's a lot of pressure on this show to perform. <laughs> Did you have any doubts? Well, you're asking that uh, to a man who said yes to Celebrity Splash and Celebrity Dog <laughs> School. So, uh, <laughs> look, I, no, no, you know what? This is one of the great shows. I, I know it, you know it, the network knows it, the viewers know it. So I, I think it's a, you know, it's a good solid ship to jump on. It's, uh, I put it out on Instagram yesterday, that the announcement that I was doing it and, so much love and so much viewer passion for this show. Uh, mm. People really, you know, flocking onto the onto Instagram just saying, you know, what this show means and how important it is. And I had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of comments. So you know that it was it, it means a lot. And I know from a, a, a televisual perspective and a production expen a, a, a experience what goes into that and how important it is. So the answer to your question is no. Like the the. the the offer came, the discussion was unfolding, and it was uh, it was an exciting proposition for me. And, and of course, I mean, uh, first things first, you know, I had to say to them, I, I'm still doing morning show. I'm not, mm. not doing the morning show. So if we can't make that work, then I can't discuss this with you any further. So we, we crossed that bridge very early, uh, and then it became something that I can, uh, you know, and, and manage and just sort of settle into and, and get excited about. Larry, I think obviously we know the answer that, you know, obviously you love uh, the morning show, but tell me what, why was that so important to make sure that you still got to do the show? 
Oh, you know, I was here day one when, when this show was a baby. Mm. Kylie and I gave birth to this thing, and it's it's been such a treat. And, and Rob, you know, Rob will. And now it's a naughty teenager, age thirteen. The show, you know. So I, I and and it's 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 the best thing I've ever done in, in my career, my forty years. Uh, it really is. I, I love it. It's uh, um, and I would hate to go out from that at this point. Uh, I really would because we're just you know we're just having such a good time. I love doing it every day and it's something that I wanted to continue doing that's for sure. Well Larry it's been number one since day one and I had the good fortune to be with you there at the beginning of the morning show before I rocked off to Studio 10 <laughs> but what I loved about that is you literally have been number one since day one it was yeah. a rejuvenation of your career and you really gave everything to that role you know you looked after the people I mean the party you hosted uh, when the show launched, you were the man who got me onto Wild Turkey, and you. Sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, we won't go into that. <laughs> but it really has been a big part of your life, hasn't it? The morning show. Oh, completely. And I've been around in television for a long time and I've been on some great shows and I've been on some dodgy shows as well. Uh, but I haven't, I've never done any, a show that's gone for this long mm. and this long at number one. Uh, it's a great team. It's an incredible family, Sarah and Kylie and the entire team. And it's something I love and I feel very, very, very passionate about. And I, and I've felt differently about other shows during my career. You know that, um, <laughs> but this is, this is one that from the start and we've been through a lot, you know, Kylie and I, um, and Sarah and the team, we've been through a lot together, plenty of different challenges along the way. Uh, and, um, still going strong. So it was nothing mm. that I ever thought for a moment that I am ready at this point to walk away from. So, Larry, in your announcement, you said you were going to learn how to say a particular volcano in Iceland. Have you done that yet? Can you say it for us now? No, well, I, I only, Rob, I only said that yesterday. Um, <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and I've been very busy uh, working out which smile I'm going to use when the, uh, when the show starts. Yeah, so fair. I'll put that as a priority. <laughs> <laughs> but I, will, I, will, no, I, need to, I need to know all these big words, right? I've got to get my smile right. I've got to get around to saying yep. uh, properly, and your time starts now. Or is it, and your time yeah. starts now? Like, I've got, I got a lot going on yeah. in the workout. I understand. No, I understand. You're a professional. I understand. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Now, Larry, there's no doubt you know I love and adore you. And, and one of the things I think people don't know about you is you are one of the nicest people in television and you do look after people. And I hope you don't mind me saying this, but when I did get uh, let go from Channel 10, you were one of the first to contact me and say, it'll be okay. It's, it can be a shit industry as well as a great industry. And these are hurdles. Um, you've been through the ringer through many of your careers. You've had the highs and lows. So you understand that more than anyone, don't you? Oh, I think I'm the most axed person in TV, Rob, if, <laughs> if you count it all out, actually. I think I've worked on, uh, and we laugh, you know, and I, 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 I think it's funny. And I get to this point in my career and I look back and I go, all those crappy shows I did, it's okay. Because I ended up here, you know, I ended up here doing this. Yeah. Uh, so it's all worked out. I, I, every crappy show gave me a new skill, something like uh, Cash Bonanza. It was dodgy show but it was massive it was, oh i liked cash audience. bonanza just oh, quietly <laughs> right so it's like an audience of two thousand people so from a, a host perspective or an mc perspective uh just to work to that audience so the show was wasn't that great but it gave me a whole new skill set to take on to the next show that i knew that i could do tv in front of uh, an audience of two thousand people so I, I look back at all those little chapters very lovingly. There's no, no regrets in my career, but to your question, absolutely, I know what it's like to get that phone call or reading the paper that, uh, that mm. you're finishing up. Although, when I, I don't think I've ever told you this. When I was 15 years old, you were hosting a show called The Main Event. And yeah. I actually oh, I snuck a video camera into the studio. I was making videos at my high school, scanner screen videos, and I actually snuck a camera in, and when all the audience had gone, I just hung around, pulled out this camera, and got you to do this. Hi, I'm Larry Ember from Channel 7's Main Event. Hi to all the viewers of Scanner Screen 5, and let's hope that you see what's in the Main Event as well. And this is a bit where we edit, right? <laughs> wow. Brilliant. Wow. <laughs> yeah, That's I've amazing. been stalking you for years, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think I think like I'm torn between actually laughing and maybe calling the cops. Well, I, it's, it's weird that you have that. 
<laughs> if only you'd known all those years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that was a great show, 1992, the main event. It was the first show, I believe, from Channel 7 to actually go up and beat 60 Minutes. So back yes. in the day, that was quite a... And it was ahead of its time because we were crossing live to, uh, uh, you know, people in their homes, So, which, of course, now you do at the drop of a hat. It's no big deal. But back then, for a, a game show, it was, it, was, it was a great show. It, it really was ahead of its time. And as actually thinking about it, it should be one of the shows they look at because it... Uh, bringing back they're bringing back everything now and that was a yeah, little right. um diamond in the rough that show it was a really really good show it really was and hopefully i can remember what what it's like to uh ask all those questions because i'm going to need that skill again now i'm going to jump over prices right skills that i learned about like uh you know how many steps does cliffy take before he falls off the yodeling <laughs> thing and i'm going to go back to old-fashioned quizzing and go what's it like to ask questions on the clock and get get everything right so it's uh, it was great fun just quickly, Larry, have you worked out how to say that volcano yet? Uh, yes, I'm just... Hey, Siri. Hey, Siri. Next, next time we speak, I will have that for you. Hey, Larry, I am really looking forward to seeing you on The Chase. It's moving production to Sydney. You start filming in March. When can we expect your episodes on air, do you think? Have they given you any so, indication? So we start filming, uh, I think, more towards April, middle to end of April there, Rob. And right. uh, they haven't given me any indication. My discussions with them at this point have really been about, um, you know, the audition process and doing all that sort of stuff. So now, this week, I believe, we'll sit down and I can get a little more intimate with how it's going to roll out. But uh, it'll be, it's later in the year, that's all I know. Did you point. actually have to audition? Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They know your well, work. Uh, this is a no brainer When we ran a poll on the TV Black Box website, we asked who should be the replacement host. You won hands down. Like, it was... Is that right? Ev oh, everyone said Larry. Oh, that's very sweet. I love mm. your I love your audience. Thank yeah. You. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's, that's very Send nice. Well, this is my way, Larry. Oh, yeah, just one. Yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, no, you know what? I, and, and I... Um, I appreciated the opportunity uh, to audition, but it was also important for me too, Rob, because I haven't done this for a long time, mate. I've been sitting on that couch merrily uh, mm. with people bringing me a skim latte at, at 10.25 every day. And it is a very different, <laughs> it's a very different performance level. It really is. It's a mm. whole different kettle of, kettle of fish. And I, so I, it, was, it was important for me uh, to get back on a shiny floor with big lights and cameras everywhere and, 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 for me to see if I could do it and have the faith moving forward. So that was Well, important. Larry, I cannot wait to see it. I think you are going to be brilliant and you are the perfect person for this. You know I love you. Robbo loves you. Ange loves you. There's so much love for you here at this show. Thanks for joining us tonight. Really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. And if I could have the uh, poster from my bedroom behind you there, Rob, back, because I just need to put it back on. <laughs> Thanks, guys, so much. Wrong, Great to you. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> triple O, triple O, crazy guy. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Larry. Thanks. It's Bye. the Red Life Shot of the Day. Where were you going today? You never know where you'll end up with the Red Life Shot of the Day. Well, today we are taking you to Washington, D.C. Now, a couple of facts for you. Two American presidents kept alligators at the White House. It's true. Both mm. Herbert Hoover and John Quincy Adams had pet alligators inside the White House. Also, did you know this? Darth Vader adorns the National Cathedral. The iconic building has many gargoyles, and one of them is sculptured a sculptured head of Darth Vader. Bring binoculars and check him out really? on the Northwest Tower. They may the force <laughs> be with you. Uh, Washington, D.C. can expect a cloudy day with a top of 60, 6 degrees and a low of minus 1 degrees. Let's get to some feedback here on the Ant, Rob and Robbo show from Big Brother Oz. Could the ARR show create a new nomination category for the TV Logies and win? Yes. Oh, yeah, I, I like that. They're, they're, yeah. Are the lads yeah, need to move with the right times now. and think about online yeah. content for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yep. That's absolutely correct. Uh, following up, it's Holfer Williams. The culture is archaic and outdated. I think he's talking there about, or she, or he, or hey, they. That's what we've learned uh, this year uh, 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 about the Golden Globes. About move Canberra. on, next one. Yeah. Or, or Canberra. No, it's the Golden Globes or Canberra. Yeah. Mm. It, was about oh, it was about what's going on in Canberra mm. at the moment. 
Oh, I didn't see the word parliament in there. I do apologise, everyone. Mary Matthews says, I think the topics are going on too long, guys. Oh, does that mean we're oh, boring? Talk about, <laughs> oh, talk no. about armchair experts here. Goodness <laughs> gracious me. Gay Wright, my favourite, favourite, favourite woman, your duty of care to your employee should be first and foremost, talking about uh, the uh, alleged rape of Brittany Higgins at Parliament House, I think Gay is referring to there. Also, MVP Madsen, Tony Abbott was booted at the twenty booze rather at the twenty fourteen grand final, and we've got some lovely shots of people here around. Uh, 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 Regina says, "Man, there is hope for me yet." Singing, I'd love to hear Reggie sing. She's got that. She's got a really loved timbre. Australian doll, let us rejoice. <laughs> Sorry, is that your Reggie or is that your Carlotta? I, I can never remember. Uh, one in the same, one in the same. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure, sure. All right. That's exactly right. Also, a big uh, a big shout out to Greg Byrant, who uh, messaged on Twitter today, said he's a big fan of, uh, well, <laughs> I don't like saying it. Rob, you say it. Of me. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, he said Robbo. He said Robbo. There was a B and an O on the end of that. Greg, oh. big shout out to you. Thanks for watching. We love and adore you. We love and adore all of our fans. Uh, so please make sure you send in your feedback to Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Just search at the RRR show. Or on Instagram uh, and Twitch, go and Rob Robbo. Uh, the little thing in the corner will tell you where to go. All right, it's time for the lowdown on everything happening in the world of entertainment. And for that, we go to Jason Roses. Hello, Jason. Hello, how are you guys? Good, good, my friend. Show us, well, show us your Dalek. Sorry, uh, sorry, that's probably not the first question. Uh, the, Dalek the, the Dalek is coming. The Dalek is coming. Oh, now, sorry, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Jason, before please, we get think, to all sorry. that, and before we get to the entertainment report, there's something I need to discuss with you, young man. Oh, and that is, ooh, okay. you were on Married at First Sight tonight. Woo! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> there I was, I just won. having a look, and suddenly you pop up. You were the MC at Bryce Woo! and Melissa's wedding. I was. Brilliant. I got to attend. It was my first Married at First Sight wedding. And here's a bit of an insider scoop. It was filmed last September on the 18th. So... I haven't been able to say anything until the wedding premiered tonight, but so it's an awful long time to wait. But yes, I went. It was at the Sydney Polo Club. It was a lot of fun. It was very crazy. It was good to see a TV wedding because I've never been a part of one before. And and look, you lasted a whole six seconds in the final cut. <laughs> oh, well, you know what I did, but I felt like. It was hours and hours of filming. And I'll tell you something else very interesting when it comes to a married at first sight wedding. When the bride comes down the aisle, they film that about five times. So obviously the first time she comes down, it's wow. important to catch her natural reaction. But then they keep refilming it and the vows and going one after another um, because, yeah, obviously they have to get the right angle. So I found that interesting because I was like... Yes. Sorry, sorry, Joe, I didn't mean to cut you off. Are you suggesting that romance isn't real on maths, that they have to <laughs> keep doing it? Uh, I won't, you, you're on air, so I won't let you answer that. Also, did you have the chicken or the beef? The uh, I, had the, I had the chicken. There wasn't Good. a lot of alcohol. Did you have to served. eat it five times? <laughs> I didn't have to eat it. No. <laughs> <laughs> watching this. We didn't get a lot of food. So at the end, I kept chanting, oh. we want more bread rolls. We want more bread rolls. <laughs> <laughs> and no wonder they thing. cut you out. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's gold, tight. though. I know. They brought more bread rolls in the end. So that was lovely. But we couldn't even <laughs> dance. But it was fun. It was nice being behind the scenes and seeing how, you know, a maths wedding works. Yeah, for sure. Love at first sight. Yeah. Oh, well, we should move oh, on. You're a bloody star, Jason Roses. Uh, now, I'm, let's go I'm to going, another... Oh, hang yes? I'm going to cut, cut you off there. I'm going to add, for those who are watching Married at First Sight this year, the wedding I attended of Bryce and Melissa, Bryce will be Mr. Drama this entire <laughs> series. True. So really? if you're watching it, it's going to get wow. worse and worse from here. So definitely keep watching. I can attest, <laughs> I've seen a couple of episodes ahead, and I will tell you... Drama! <laughs> well, oh, here's, here's something else. There is a couple oh of awesome throwing incidences where he might throw water on other contestants, but you didn't hear that from me. 
No, no, we certainly didn't. Uh, Jason, thank I'm you very much. I'm learning things for housewives. Oh, <laughs> you've right. got to throw, Ange, you've got to throw water on someone. Yeah, wait, I mean, wait, wait, wait. No, 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 no. no. Our you'll Angela, have to no, throw no. water on Gina. No, no. Our, 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 our Angelie Rao Ew. is far more sophisticated. <laughs> Angelie Rao, I said. <laughs> no, I said, well, I said throw water on Gina and Angelie said who? <laughs> oh, sorry, I stuffed everyone's and joke up there. I do apologise. thrown the first shot. Does she like it? It's I, on, I, it's I on. won't have our glamorous, brilliant Sophista. I want her throwing no, moat. Must be champagne. Oh, uh, of or, course. Yeah, Although that's a yeah, waste that's of what I want to say. Hey, we, we do have to move yeah. on, guys. There's a bit of entertainment. Oh, to I'm get so through. sorry, Robert. Yeah, sorry, sorry. And sorry, Jason. Um, we've yes. got to get to your Dalek. Okay, so let's answer this question quickly. <laughs> uh, is. is um, is uh, what I would think I would recall Saturday if I did see you, Dalek. Hey, hey, it's Saturday. Is that coming back? <laughs> the, <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, the rumours are going around. News.com has done a poll, and it basically showed that 22% of people do want Hey, Hey, it's Saturday to come back. Daryl Summers has said this on Facebook in December. In light of this being such a negative year for Australia and the world, I look forward oh. to offering some positive wow. news soon. So I don't know if he's talking about Hey Hate Saturday, but rumours are he might be starring on Dancing with the Stars as the host of the All Stars version. So whether Hey Hate Saturday comes back or he's on Dancing with the Stars, time will tell. Let me tell you, Jason, Daryl Summers will be hosting Dancing with the Stars, barring some negotiation that goes wrong. He, he has okay. been the front runner from the get-go. When I broke the story that Dancing with the Stars was coming back, yes, on TV, Black Box, I was told Daryl was in the mix. I just didn't have a final confirmation on that. I'm telling you, though, he will be hosting it. There's your How money. much do you think he's going to get paid, though? Like 800000 Well, if, if, if Bo Ryan's getting 800000 for The Amazing Race, Daryl's getting about $10 billion. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, Jace, we, we were just um, we were just talking about one Gina who I don't know. Let's talk about another Gina I don't know. Um, <laughs> Gina Carano being fired Gina by Disney Carano. Plus, but there's a bit of an update. There is. So in a new interview on the Ben Shapiro show, of course, we know her. She's been fired from Lucasfilms because last month, she made like a series of controversial social media posts which sparked the movement by a Gino Carano. So basically Lucasfilms fired her and she's come out and basically said that she supports her co-star Pascal, Pedro Pascal, even though he made very similar posts on Twitter back in 2008 about the Holocaust. So even though she's been fired, a lot of people are now saying, why isn't her co-star Pedro being fired for making similar controversial posts on Twitter? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Mm. But look, let me ask you this. We're speaking about Disney. They fired yeah. her. But the streaming service is about to raise prices. But you can tell us how to avoid the price rise. <gasps> oh, my God. Ooh. Literally. So listen up. If you've got Disney like I do, if you lock in from tonight, before midnight, it's going to cost you $8.99 a month. But from tomorrow, it's $11.99 a month. So <gasps> Disney, yes, I know. How, how much is that? Uh, nine, ten, that's $3, Three dollars more a month. <laughs> yeah, but over 12 months, that's a lot of money. Lock that's in your subscription. Now, why is it happening? This is the important part. Well, Disney is basically announcing a new service called Star, which hundreds of seasons, about 155 TV series and 450 movies are going to come attached to Disney. Ooh. It's more targeted mm. towards adults, but they're saying if you lock in a 12-month contract, you can still get it for the price of $8.99, but it's only up until midnight tonight. So if you love Disney and you want something a little bit more mature, then they're going to cater that because at the moment I've got Disney and I can only just watch Jurassic Park. How many times can I watch Jurassic Park? <laughs> what are you, you talking can watch about? You've got the Star Wars films, you've got WandaVision, you've got the Marvel films. You've got films. the Simpsons. You've got, you've got the wrong settings on, my friend. I think I do, yeah. Okay. Oh, I forgot about Star Wars. That thing. <laughs> yeah. The Star Wars. <laughs> 
Christmas. <laughs> well, thanks to Tracy Grimshaw there for our entertainment report telling us how we can get more of your bang for your buck at, uh, for a streaming service. Tracy, Tracy, before I let you go, uh, I've been excited. I've been building up the interest and the excitement. Um, look, I, I've, I've got a question here, but I'm not going to ask it. Show us your Dalek. Uh, I, well, I, I have a very big Dalek and I'm about to show you. So look at what has been unearthed on Twitter. It's a vintage Doctor Who. Take a look at this film clip basically promoting smoking. Stop by the stairs. Well, uh, Jason, I just found that hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I thought your uh, your Dalek would be smoking, but I didn't think it would be literally smoking. What the hell is that all about? Well, I think it's just the, it was obviously promoting. I don't know. I really don't. Did you think my Dalek would be as big as it was? <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you oh, what happened, Robbo. Was it was a commercial film before the laws changed, not allowing cigarettes to be advertised. So the commercial never oh, actually see. went to air. And they filmed this as part of the Hamlet series, which always ended up with something going wrong. It was unearthed by vintage Doctor Who, and it's just some, its just hilarious to me. I think it's great. But look, we are at the end of the And Robin Robbo show. Jason Roses, thank you very much. We will see you tomorrow night, my friend, where you can talk about things you understand, not Doctor Who. More married yeah, I, at first sight. Honestly, when you sent me that thing, I was like, what is a Dalek and what is Doctor Who? Can we talk about young stuff, not old people, boring stuff? I had no idea what and, and, and when I read a daily or something, anyway, we got to go. And we'll I have to see you tomorrow for the Andrew and Robo I, show. I, I was, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs>